We need to control exposure to welding fumes because they're known to cause harm to humans. Short-term exposure can cause things like irritation to the nose, throat and lungs, or even metal fume fever. And longer term exposure can lead to more serious diseases like lung cancer and occupational asthma or kidney disease. Um, it's also been classified as a carcinogen back in 2017, so it's known to cause cancer in humans. When I first began welding, I never thought of what risk could come from, you know, the small things in welding, like actually breathing in fumes or all that sort of stuff. That welding fumes in air can be breathed in by people and the amount of welding fumes in the air or the concentration depends on you know, what level of harm it can have to those people. So what we want to do is reduce the amount of welding fumes in the air to make sure that they're staying below a level which can cause harm to them. Because welding fumes are a hazardous substance, under the regulations you have to follow the hierarchy of control. And so that starts with elimination and substitution. But generally, um, you can't do that when you're doing welding. So you have to look at the next level, which is engineering controls. Local exhaust ventilation is a type of engineering control, and it uh, can be a really effective control for exposure to welding fumes. And there's a couple of different types. So you've got uh, on torch extraction, and this works really well because you've got the capture point for the extraction in the torch. And so it's actually capturing the fumes right where they're being produced at the weld. And so they're not actually spreading up into the operator's breathing zone. So since having the on-torch extraction, now you sort of get towards the end of the day, you're breathing a lot easier. You're not getting that niggly headache that you would normally get, which I think has a lot to do with sort of the carbon and everything that you're breathing in, that you don't realise you're breathing in until it's actually eliminated from the, the process. So. You know, the end of the day comes, you're feeling a lot better in yourself, you've still got a lot more energy. You've also got another type of local exhaust ventilation and this is based on using a booth. So the welder stands in the booth and they have the fan at the back of the booth and they're welding towards the fan so the fumes are getting drawn away from the operator. The mechanical ventilation usually works by controlling exposure to the operator. So you've got the uh, extraction point at the position where the operator's working and it's drawing fumes away from the operator and it doesn't get a chance for the fumes to leave and enter the air in the rest of the building. So it doesn't reach other people that might be working in the building. Whereas dilution ventilation works by just diluting the overall concentration of the fumes in a building and so it's not actually controlling exposure to the operator. So mechanical ventilation is an engineering control, so it's a high order control and it's something WorkSafe always looks for first to see what employees are doing. Even a combination of controls can help reduce that uh, exposure to those hazardous substances. When we're looking at PPE, we should be looking more around the air fed respirators and because that's taking ventilated air and running it across the face of the user and preventing uh, fumes from entering the user's lungs. Before considering using a respirator, it's, it's important that workplaces provide that PPE to them and ensure that they're worn properly. So the whole idea of reducing them welding fumes is you know, help you better or anyone in the workplace, even if they're at the other end of the factory and they're not actually welding, their, their quality of air is better, our quality of air is better, helps everyone.